Hello there, my name's Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. This is Figure Friday. Today I'll be showing you how I've painted a regiment of Spanish infantry from the Peninsula Campaign of 1808 and it's based on a technique called dry brushing. Now if you like the video please do remember to subscribe using the click to the link in the bottom corner there and if you really really like it you might want to consider supporting future productions by going through Patreon or buy me a coffee links to those are in the information box below so let's get on and see how we painted these Spanish boys you will remember from the previous video that each battalion has a mounted officer and 30 foot figures the 1st Battalion has the two Grenadier Companies, all the other companies are Musketeers. All of the figures are 18mm scale from the AB range designed by Tony Barton. I also discussed the layout of the bases. Here is the regiment in two battalion lines, forwards is towards the top of the frame. The first job today is to prime the metal, now I'm using an airbrush to apply a black primer. I find the airbrush gives a lighter coat than a spray can, although of course you can do a wash with a brush if you like. My first paint is going on with a dry brush. Now use a relatively thick paint, but just put a small bit onto the brush and work it into the hairs, then kind of skim it across the surface of the figures. The paint will stick to the high spots, creating an automatic shading effect. Some people like to use a very, very thin whitewash first to take the edge off the harshness of the black, but I like to leave it as it is. Don't be afraid to go back and add a little bit more white later, just don't overdo it the first time. Don't thin your paint first, as this technique just will not work, as you can see here on the right. And don't use too much paint at once, or it will clump, as you can see here on the left you'll get a feel for what is right. I test the thickness by brushing across a corner of the wooden support rod I use here. One of my wonderful viewers suggests spraying a bit of card with your black primer and using that as a test surface too, and that's a great tip. For the mounted officers, I'm not going to be brushing the horses. I prefer to do a colour wash direct onto the black for them, as you'll see later. The officer and his saddle cloth are brushed though. So, onto the paints, and I start by picking out the regimental colouring. This is so much easier if you've done a bit of dry brushing. The Mercia Regiment had sky blue on their lapels, the bit that actually covers the front of the body, as well as the cuffs, shoulder straps, and the turnbacks on the coat tails. The Grenadiers also have this regimental colour on the bags on the back of their bearskins. Now drummers in Spanish regiments wore the Bourbon colours of the royal household, so red lapels, cuffs and turnbacks, and a dark blue coat. This is the same for the musketeers and the grenadiers. Everyone in the regiment also has red on their plumes. I'll add this as I go along. Next I'll apply some flesh tone to the faces and the hands. Now many Spanish infantry troops wore peasant sandals instead of boots. They seem to work better in the Iberian terrain. Now these are modelled on some figures, so flesh tones for their feet too. After that I'll go around the regiment touching up the black for any overspill on the hats and on the boots. Some Spanish wore long false boots, especially in winter. It's a kind of mix and match approach to uniforms that makes these figures so appealing. On then to the brown for the muskets, I'm using a mahogany colour. Then a slightly redder brown for the hair. Everyone gets the same hair colour in my regiments. Back to black for the cartridge boxes and this kind of faded leather colour for the backpacks. Some of the troops carry their blankets over their shoulders. These get a sort of brownish grey colour. Really any sort of rurally, peasanty, natural colour will do well. 
Then I'll use that reddish brown as leather for the sandals. These had a piece across the front of the foot and another at the back of the ankle. But as long as you've got the toes pointing out the front, they'll look fine. Now those muskets get a strip of gun metal for their barrels, followed by some brass barrel bands. Now these are generally very well moulded with three bands on each musket, but some have fewer or even none at all depicting captured muskets, a common thing of the era. There are a few other brass accents to add, such as the cross belt plates and some suggestion of buttons. The drums are also brass at this time. If you're modelling later figures, say around 1812, the Spanish had reissued the painted wooden drums. When that's dry, the hoops of the drums are painted red, then the tensioners are painted white. Now I'm going to add some metallic detail to the officers with gold on the gorget around the neck, some buttons and of course the epaulets. Note the gold fringe to the officers hats too. Next I'll add some steel to the locks of the muskets and also to the bayonets. Then I'll paint the musket straps in white. While I've got the White House, I'll also add some decoration to the bags on the back of the Grenadiers' bearskins. I've put a spot of red in the middle, at the top. Then there were these often quite ornate designs down the back, but at this scale and for this use, a suggestion will work well enough. The officers' horses are last. I've done the officers in this generic white with red waistbands. The horses get a wash of brown, then the tackle and reins detail in black but more of this when I get around to doing some cavalry figures. Finally I'm going to use a very small wash to pick out the last details. This is not as dilute a wash as I would normally use, I use it quite sparingly just to pick out the finer bits and pieces, much as I would actually on an aircraft kit for example. Now I can let them all settle down and let all the paint fully dry. Onto the colours, I've cut these from the printed sheet from Fighting 15s. Make sure the Coronella with the big coat of arms goes with the Grenadier of the 1st Battalion and the Ordonantha with the Cross of Burgundy with the Musketeer of the 2nd Battalion. I fold the flags over to get the bend in the right place then apply a gentle coat of the glue of your choice. I use white PVA, making sure there's enough to grab onto the staff in the middle. When the glue is wet, you should make some folds in the paper to look like it's blowing in the wind. I'm going to add some paint to the figure bases now. Here it's a kind of mid-earth colour. Choose the colour closest to the earth tone that you want. Then the basing. I've cut the plastic bases to size. I use 25 by 35 millimetres for an eight figure block. I'll just roughen up the surface with a bit of sandpaper. Use a coarse grit like 120 or 180. I like to draw on the layout as well, just to remind me who is going where. Then the figures go on. I use a two-part epoxy to glue them on, but you can use anything that bonds plastic and metal. If you're using super glue, then do make sure the figure bases are properly filed flat. And before you know it, there's the regiment. Very smart too. Now, you could just paint the bases now, like a lot of people do, but I prefer to add a bit of earth texture. This is a loose kind of plaster-based textured material that you can apply with a small stick between the legs of the figures. Any bits you miss will be hidden by the paint we did earlier. Just work your way round as best you can. You can use a wet brush to push bits into place or wipe off any spills. Just keep rinsing the brush in water. Then once that's dried, I'm going to add some flock to look like grass few dabs of white PVA here and there, not too much as this is supposed to be sun-drenched Iberia. Then drop the flock onto the base, 
press down in a few spots, tape on shake off the excess and leave to dry. More excess will come off later. And that is the Mercia Infantry Regiment of 1808 finished. So very smart. Don't they look fine, fellows? Now, if you do Peninsular War Gaming, um, I think you're probably going to want a division or so of Spanish, if only to break up the monotony of the blue and red of the French and British. They look fantastic. Great flags, great uniforms, pretty good troops as well. So well worth doing. Now, if you've enjoyed this, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. The link is in the bottom right corner there. Do keep coming back for more Figure Fridays and the regular Monday Matters news programme. And I hope to see you soon. Take care and I'll see you next time. <laughs>